Siaga and the Blue Boys. On Friday, August 3rd, 2012, Jamaica College alumni Blue Boys Dennis Jung, Maurice Crooks, Rodney Campbell, and Sidney Murray had a chat with former Prime Minister of Jamaica, the Most Honorable Edward Siaga at his UWE office. This is part one of four, featuring questions from Maurice Crooks. All right. You have basically been one of the major figures in Jamaica's political history since 1962. Now, what do you think, what, what was your greatest achievement over that period of time? What do you think about the Constitution in that it was prepared in a matter of three weeks? Well, I would say that my greatest achievement is the winning of the election in 1972, in 1980, 72 to 80, because that was uh, uh, enabled us to get back on a track which we could develop on. Whereas in the 1970s, the, the ideology that was being followed was one which was carrying Jamaica down in terms of the uh, growth of the country, the finances of the country, uh, the politics of the country, in every way. Uh, it's a long list of negatives that took place in that time. And it had to be stopped and it had to be turned around 180 degrees. In doing that, I was on the right track myself because uh, it didn't take much longer after that when socialism was completely faded out. All right. I understand your your idea, but looking back from 2012 now and seeing that as a people, what we need to do to move forward, do you think it was totally a bad idea when they went the way of not necessarily communism, but democratic socialism? Yeah, the democratic socialism is just a step away from radical socialism, which was being flirted with, although the name given was de democratic socialism. But a lot of flirtation took place through the Cuban connection and uh, other connections with the Soviet Union and etc., uh, etc., et in which gave an, uh, gave an indication that what man really had in mind was radical socialism. In fact, he said that to uh, a Russian interviewer in 1979 by the name of Varaikov when he was uh, condemning the United States as the colon colonial power over Puerto Rico and um, made the comment that he had been an admirer of the Cuban system and the Soviet system and that if they won the next election they intended to withdraw from the Commonwealth and to continue in that area and on that direction. Can you talk from commandant? Yeah, the UK. You mean from, from the establishment of commandant? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm thinking about the... Well, I didn't know about that interview. Yeah, it's in my book. Well, it's in your book. Right, right, it's in your book, yes, you're right, you're right. That was one of them. That's a very decisive moment. Because he had never expressed himself so fully. Yeah. I suppose having the opportunity to speak to someone from Russia, we didn't really know it was going to filter back here. Yeah, yeah, and Lena yeah, picked yeah. it up and one of the American papers. But uh, with the world being apolitical in that it's been moving, it's moved. Capitalism is basically dead. Capitalism yeah. is basically dead as we know it. Right? So the world. Socialism is dead too. Exa yeah. Exactly. So they're coming middle of the road. It's coming almost that they're all coming to a, a democratic, socialistic ideal. Not at all. No. Not at all. Um, no. Not at all. No. Uh, so how would you We're coming it? to where the Labour Party positioned itself from the very yeah. beginning. That's where was that? That is dead centre. On the uh, on the right, you get your financing with yes. with policies for the market and developmental initiative of the people, and on the left. You use the finances to help the poor and to build social programs. 
So and that's where we were from the beginning, and we still are. So how would you then, since you're saying that this is where the, the Labour Party was, how do you describe the, the advent of a place like China? Like? China. The Chinese have developed a mode of transition, and being the people that they are, in which time is not so much of the essence because they don't have an electoral system that calls them to to book and voting in short periods. They are taking their time and evolving into a, a state that will uh, continue to move towards a strong market system but with certain reservations and those reservations are reservations that they hold very strongly. So they're not making a complete conversion, at least not at this stage. And Cuba is also moving in that direction. Cuba is moving in that direction too. I believe the only one that has made really a move is North Korea. Yes. Yeah. What? Okay. Yeah. Let's go about the constitution. Now, with Jamaica wanting now <coughs> to move from the monarchy, from the Commonwealth, to become a republic. Nothing to do with the Commonwealth. Jamaica is not moving from the Commonwealth. Well, I know, I, I know, I, I know it won't happen, and I know why it won't happen either. And that's probably because they need, they need the vote from, they need a consensus vote from the, from the Senate, and they don't, they won't have that. No, 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 that's just a mechanism. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that nobody wants to move out of the Commonwealth. Countries are moving into the Commonwealth. It's over 50 countries now. Sure. Yes, what is the question you just asked? You were talking about the Constitution. Oh, right, right. You were mentioning about the Commonwealth, about people coming in. That's right, yes. Coming in. yes. And that's because of the, the strength it gives, right? That's right. Um, it isn't a, a, a collection of countries that are um, necessarily adhering to the British Crown, but to former colonies that have found it important and interesting to link together and against the background of their common experience and to work together against a future that takes into account that common experience. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore you would say that um, it is more important for us, Jamaica, than even the CARICOM, eh? Than? The, than CARICOM. Well, I'm still searching for what CARICOM is <laughs> and what it does. Uh, the fact of the matter is that CARICOM is a is a feeling that uh, because we are people of the same background culturally and uh, to a certain extent historically, um, that we ought to link together. Yeah. But you can't just link together if you want to be a mini common red fine. But you can't link together and expect to find a common path economically and in other directions politically. Yeah. And every try that we have made in that direction it has come apart. Just like if the Commonwealth was to say that uh, this is the economic path that we're going to follow, there are other countries that would follow. Mm -hmm. Or this is the, the, the background culturally we're going to follow. It's a, it's a collection of adversities. Uh, and uh, in the sense of the CARICOM area, we have certain pluses to our benefit, and that is like the University of the West Indies. Um, the Caribbean Development Bank and a few institutions that have been evolved from those. So the, it hasn't been completely without value mm -hmm. and it's best left to be uh, an overhanging umbrella that can shelter you from rain in a certain extent, but it's not mm -hmm. going to do much more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, talk about a Commonwealth, right? And you're basically looking at it from a point a possible economic development and structure. Do you not then see that idea of the Federation in the 60s or 50s was a move in that direction? Absolutely. Uh, the Federation was an attempt to devise one stream, one path, one pair of shoes that everybody must wear, and it didn't work. It didn't work economically. Manley and Eric Williams fell out very early. We fell out with Grantley Adams very early on taxation, etc., etc., and it could never have worked. It, 
I believe we could have done a better job at it. Everything takes negotiation. So I presume we could have done something better in terms of it. But look at this from this point, point of view. If you fast forward from the 50s <coughs> to the 80s and 90s, 2000s, we have a union being formed, <coughs> European Common Union. We have one. <coughs> another one which formed, is falling apart. Another one being formed by America, NAFTA. No. Common Union. No, that's yeah, no, that's about. a different thing. No, but there, there, no, there's a free trade agreement. Yeah, but it's like but it pulls in all those people within there. Yeah, but, but they don't have the, 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 the political, political and economic yeah. linkages, which is what creates a problem. But all right, so like I, don't, I don't know any institution that is founded and, and, and flourishing and brought together by people of extreme culture. Because even though Mr. Sayanatra will say um, there was the belief that because we have the same culture, that whole CARICOM issue was going to be a sentimental giant. Yeah, My thing is, right. I don't believe that we could even look at Trinidad and find the kind of similarities that would ever get the synergy. And that's just Trinidad alone. I what? don't think we could ever have been yeah, there. Except for cricket, there is really, yeah. there's that really is. nothing else. I mean, there are what? more things that separate us than join us. Yeah, but yeah. It, you can have a negotiated settlement. You can have a point where you come together for a purpose. And to me, right now, that's what we, that would have worked admirable for the Caribbean countries. I think, well, I know point in, 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 I can't quote a chapter and verse, but um, Michael Manley was negotiating, we thought about trade between the Caribbean and Africa. Right? I read it in, I don't think it could work. The poor can't would, trade with the poor. Yeah. Yeah. The poor can't. <laughs> if, 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 if I can interject, <laughs> if I can interject, I don't, I, I, I don't make any um, same thing. We can't trade with this community yeah. because we're making the same things. The only difference is that our economy has gone to uh, such a low level that we can't make even what we could make before. Right. Price um, of oil, interest rates, etc. Those things no longer allow us to, to make things of value that can be traded. But it's the same products. Yes. If tomorrow we solve the interest rate problem and we solve the energy problem and started to manufacture, they're manufacturing all the things that Trinidad is manufacturing. Yeah, yeah but it's...